Hi everyone, Don Holling with the Prep Girls Hoops Illinois here tonight with another one of our team interviews. We're here with uh, Coach Grant Supernot from the uh, Illini West team and he's got three of his girls with him and we're going to go through and talk a little bit about their season last year and uh, upcoming uh, uh, you know expectations for next season and then we're going to go ahead and get into talking about talking to some of the players that he's got in his squad that uh, we think are three excellent players and have a future maybe in the college game. So Coach, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks for having me on, Don. Uh, tonight, we've got Megan Harrell, who's a sophomore, Carly Artman, junior, and Katie Kirkham, who's a sophomore. So uh, this past season, uh, coming into the season, uh, we were really young. Uh, we finished the season being 26 and 5. Uh, we had one senior, two juniors, and then the rest were all sophomores and freshmen. Um, so coming into the season, we weren't really sure um, how how good we could have been. Uh, but I thought, you know, as the course of the season went on, we started out at uh, Brimfield, um, ended up taking third place in a very uh, tough tournament there, uh, beat Midwest Central, um, who had um, Maddie Harper, um, who's going to Parkland. Uh, we did a good job of guarding her. Uh, Katie Kirkham did a really good job guarding her, actually. Um, and uh, that kind of started getting us going a little bit. Uh, we started one senior, two juniors, and then two sophomores. So after that, um, you know, we got into the season. Um, we ended up taking third at the Beardstown Lady Tiger Classic. Um, 23 teams, uh, very, very competitive te uh, teams in that um, tournament. Of course, Lewiston ended up um, playing that. Uh, we lost uh, Lewiston um, to get in the semifinals. Um, and we just didn't play that well against them. Um, they're a very good team, um, but we ended up taking third uh, at, at Beardstown. So um, I thought we did really well. We beat Illini Bluffs in that game. Um, Carly had a really good game shooting for us that game. Uh, I want to say she had seven threes maybe that game. Ended up with 23 points or so off the top of my head. Um, so then going in the second half of the season, uh, I thought we were clicking really well. Um, you know, we, we ended up taking second place at the Prairie Land South. Uh, we lost to Lewiston, uh, who ended up winning the conference. Uh, our record ended up being 5-1. and one. Um, Against Quincy Notre Dame, uh, we were playing really well, and that's when, you know, Megan got hurt um, and had to miss the last five games of the season. So our first game without Megan, we ended up having to go to Lewiston, at Lewiston, which, which is always a tough uh, place to play. Uh, but we did really well there uh, and, um, you know, ended up – finishing the season strong, uh, going into um, the Sherrard Regional. Uh, we ended up being the number one seed in, in our subsectional, which is a very uh, tough subsectional because you had us, uh, Quincy Notre Dame, uh, one and two. So we kind of went separate ways. So we had to travel the farthest from Carthage to Sherrard, uh, but we were kind of used to that uh, because just going to Brimfield, of course, was an hour, about hour and 45 minutes away from Carthage. Um, but, you know, we like to set our schedule uh, to play really good teams throughout the course of the season. Um, and I was very pleased uh, with how well we played up at Sherrard. We ended up playing um, Rock Ridge in the semifinals and did a very good job of kind of setting the tone. Um, that was Megan's first game back. Harley and Katie had really good games for us. Uh, and then the championship game, uh, in the regional championship, we had to play Mercer County, who we played earlier in the year at our place uh, in November. Uh, we kind of took care of business against them and, you know, knew coming in that they were going to do a triangle and two against Carly and Katie. Um, and, you know, Megan came off the bench for us that game, uh, ended up with 16 points, kind of gave us that spark off that bench. Um, so after the regional championship game, uh, we went to Macomb for the sectional. It was us against U High, and then the other side was uh, Quincy Notre Dame and Knoxville. And, you know, you look at that sectional, um, you know, I felt like whoever came from that sectional had a good chance of, you know, possibly going to the state tournament. It was one of the toughest sectionals in the state. Um, and, you know, we ended up losing to U High. And I think that's really showed our youth uh, that game. Uh, you know, U High uh, dropped down from 3A to 2A uh, this past season. You could just tell that they were senior dominant. And they were just they 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 were just a little bit better that night. Uh, but we learned a lot about you know who we were. Uh, and again, you know, you look back at the season and go twenty. You won twenty six games with a very young team with only one senior. 
and you got basically everybody coming back. Uh, you know, a lot of things that we could build off of, you know, moving forward. Awesome. Sounds like a great season uh, with that young of a team. So as you look towards next year, I mean, obviously you expected another big year, anything different on your schedule, any different tournaments or anything that you're playing in, or is the schedule pretty much the same? Uh, well, this, uh, this next season, uh, we're actually going to be in the Macomb Thanksgiving tournament. That's really the only um, different tournament that we will be in. Um, and, you know, we're kind of excited about going there because one, it's only about 20 minutes away, which is always good, but it's a very competitive uh, Thanksgiving tournament. You got Pleasant Plains in it, who uh, won state this year. Um, you got Illini Bluffs, Havana, who are going to be competitive with girls coming back. Um, you know, you got Macomb, who's going to be scrappy, and you got Moline. So it's going to be a good tournament, a good test for us uh, to start the season. Uh, we'll still continue to go to Beardstown. That's a good tournament that we like to go into, um, and we always want to be playing our best basketball going into the new year, and I feel like that's a good measuring stick for us. And then we sprinkle in the Camp Point Central um, tournament, um, which is like a week, a week in January. This past year, uh, we were unable to finish that um, tournament due to the weather, uh, like many many uh, teams this season. Uh, but we were able to get two games up there. Um, we were the one seed in there, uh, beat a, a good Quincy team, very physical uh, team. Uh, these three girls played really well against them. And then we beat uh, a Brown County team. So. Uh, those are the three terms that will that will be in next season. Okay, and then as far as the rest of your schedule, and as far in your, I guess, obviously we'll get to it with the girls later. What some of their goals are for next year, but talking about yours a little bit, um, how do you see the conference? And then you know how where uh, you know, I'm sure with all this much talent coming back, you're hoping to make a run come tournament time. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, you know, uh, and and what that was one of the things that you know going into this summer. Um, prior to this whole uh, COVID-19 going on, uh, we had a really good schedule, I thought, going into uh, the summer, uh, preparing for us. We were going to play a lot of bigger schools. We were going to travel a little bit. We usually go to the Mizzou women's basketball um, team camp and always play some bigger schools there. Um, I just felt like we had a good good group that we were going to see kind of be tested in the summertime to see where we're at. But, you know, we're excited about uh, next season, you know, having everybody back, basically four starters coming back. And of course, these three girls that are here are, are, are big key pieces to us. Um, and, you know, we're going to have weigh heavily on them um, next season. Um, you know, you got Carly Arman, who's a junior, uh, two year starter for us, um, averaged 16 points a game for us. Um, you know, she shot 35% from the three point line, 38 from the field goal, from the field, 75% from the free throw. So she's a type of player that can shoot the basketball. One thing that I thought, you know, Carly did a great job of this year was improving her um, mid-range game, um, pull up jump shot and get to the basket. So she's a captain for us in that. And, and you know, we're going to have to really rely on her to be that leadership for us because this will be our third year in varsity um, going into um, next season. Um, you know, you got Katie Kirkham, who will be our point guard, uh, be our second year starting for us. And, uh, you know, she, her and Megan both dressed as varsity players for us as freshmen coming in and you know you could tell that Katie uh, was going to be the one that helped facilitate for us um, and you know that last season we kind of asked her to shoot the basketball a little bit more and that's kind of out of her um, comfort zone but she's a really good shooter um, in that and she ended up scoring averaging about 13 points a game for us uh, shot 40 percent from three 50 percent overall from the field goal and 85 percent while um, dishing out four assists um, you know, Katie's more of a, a pass-first uh, type of player for us, but, you know, she's also a really good shooter. And I thought as the course of the season went on, she was uh, being more aggressive, looking to score for us, and was able to do things for us late in the season and, and, and by shooting the basketball on the perimeter when teams were focusing on Carly. And, you know, Carly and Katie do a great job of getting the basket along with Megan. So um, it's going to be great to have her, um, you know, being our point guard next year. She'll have a full year of varsity experience under her belt and that. And, you know, we're looking forward to having her uh, coming back and leading the show for us. And then another sorry, right here, Megan Harold, you know, averaged 12 points. Of course, the last five games of the season, like I said, uh, she um, hurt her knee. Uh, we thought that it was uh, season ending, uh, but luckily it wasn't. And um, we kind of just waited to kind of take to see how she would have gotten better and maybe the hopes of playing in the postseason. 
um, and we were fortunate enough to get her back um, during postseason play. Like I said, another girl averaged 12 points a game for us, uh, three rebounds, three assists, 2.7 uh, um, steals a game, um, shot 47% from the field and 55% from the free throw. So, um, you know, she's a type player that can get to the basket and um, is a good slasher. Uh, her mid-range game is getting a lot better, um, and she finishes well for us. Uh, the one thing I can say about these three is they play really well together. Um, they've been playing since they were real little. So you could just tell, like, the, the first couple of games, they had to kind of get used to, you know, playing a lot of minutes together and kind of getting back in the groove in that. And I thought, you know, going into Christmas time, we were hitting, we were playing well. And then, you know, in the course of the season after Christmas, that Quincy game, I thought, was one of those games where we were clicking on all cylinders. And we're like, okay, this is, uh, this is going to be fun the second half of the season. Quincy Notre Dame came into our place, and, and that we were, we, we were clicking on all cylinders with that game as well. Uh, that's, you know, fortunately, Megan got hurt that game. But uh, the one thing I'll say is, you know, we, we didn't really lose anything after that. We kind of kept preparing and kept playing well, like we, like we, know, like we knew we could. Um, but it's exciting to have these three, the coach. Uh, they're, fun, they're a fun group to coach. Um, they love to play basketball, and, they, and they're winners. They, they want to be good, and they, and they want to take that next step for our program. And I think – you know, being in that sectional last year against U High, um, it was that basically their first true test, and now they got a taste of what it's like. So hopefully, you know, we can build off of that, and we're gonna rely on these three. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, anything else you want to add, Coach? Or if not, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in with the girls. Nope. Okay, great. Then, girls, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, and we'll jump in, and I'll start with Carly, um, and just kind of start with that first question. I know Coach kind of talked a little bit about you guys already, but uh, just to start with, Carly, just introduce yourself and again, talk about your grade, position, height, uh, um, any other any other sports that you play, that type of stuff. Uh, my name is Carly Artman. I am 5'5", five five and I'm a shooting guard. I will be graduating in 2021. And um, what was the other question? Uh, any other sports that you play or oh. anything you're involved in and in activities outside of sports? Um, I play volleyball as well, and I am a part of clubs from our school. Okay, awesome. Megan, I'll jump to you next. Same uh, same qu questions. Okay, I'm Megan Harrell. I'm 5'9". I'm graduating in 2022. I'm a guard post. I do kind of both with my height. Is I'm kind of the tallest, but still um, kind of a guard. Okay. Um, what else? <laughs> any other sports that you play or any club, anything else that you're involved in outside of sports? Um, I, I play volleyball and towards the end of the year, how I hurt my knee, I decided to take a year off of track, but they ended up not having anyways, but, um, I'm planning on doing that next year again. And in school activities I do, I'm in uh, key club, international club and FFA and outside at Activities I show cattle. Okay, awesome. Katie, same with you. Um, my name is Katie Kirkham. I'm five five, point guard, and um, I'm class of twenty twenty two, and I also participate in track and volleyball, okay. along with clubs. Okay, awesome. And then we'll go back to Carly then and on to that second question where, again, Coach talked about it a little bit, but putting it in your words, Carly, what do you think that your strengths are, both your basketball skill set and then any kind of uh, physical strengths being, you know, speed, quickness, jumping ability, strength, all that type of stuff? Um, I would say I'm very strong shooting-wise and also seeing the court well. And growing up, I've always been a point guard, so my ball handling is also very well. And I would consider myself quick. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Megan, on to you with the same set of questions then. I would say my best skill is anticipating all players, like my teammates and the, my opponents also. Um, and also finding an open spot to take it to the basket mostly or take a shot. Um, those two are probably my best things. Okay, and then as far as uh, 
physical skills and anything you anything that you think uh i know you said you ran track are you fast or um anything like that um in track i do jumping i'm i have a pretty good vertical okay. and i have somewhat long arms okay that probably helps when you as you said you uh, play inside in addition to playing outside that probably helps when you're playing inside against bigger girls then yeah okay great uh, Katie on to you for the same set of questions um, I can handle the ball well from being point guard and um, can attack and dish out to teammates and I'd say I'm a pretty good defender and okay. quick quick okay that obviously helps when you're trying to get, trying to penetrate Okay, uh, back to Carly. Uh, Carly, I want to talk now a little bit more then about what you're trying to improve upon. And we talked about what you think you're good at right now. What is it you're trying to get better at for next year? Um, using different moves to get to the basket and around the defender quicker, and also how to score on taller defenders. Um, and lastly, this year it's kind of been challenging to like get open more since they know I'm a shooter from the previous years. So finding different ways to get open and moving around more to wear out my defender. Okay. And anything on the <laughs> physical side that you're trying to get better at, whether that be strength, quickness, uh, endurance, anything like that? Um, obviously getting stronger and quicker, just doing sprints to help me. Okay. Um, what about uh, just expanding a little bit about what you're talking about? Shooters run into that kind of defense stuff all the time. Have you, are you working at all on trying to get your shot off faster too? Or is that something that you're, have you thought about? Yes, um, my brother and sister are very quick. So I've had them guard me a lot and just be all on me and just trying to find a way to get open and get my shot off a lot quicker. Okay. And just expanding a little bit more about that because it's always interesting to talk to the players and find out with the way the world is today, do you, uh, you know, do you have a basket at your house or where are you finding the opportunity to, to get any work in right now? Uh, we do have a basket at my house in the driveway. Okay, good. Makes it a lot easier. Unfortunately, in today's world and the, the way it is today, I kind of have to ask. I'm always curious where the girls are finding an opportunity to play. Uh, Megan, then on to the, onto you with the same set of questions as far as what you're trying to improve on this season. Um, I've been working with a skills coach for the past year and we changed my uh, footwork and stuff to get my uh, field goal percentage up um, with that like meaning like when I catch the ball um, so like on the pass and on the dribble i um, getting a quicker shot off and I've also been working on um, different moves to get to the basket. Like I said, my strongest goal is, um, strongest uh, skill is probably getting around my defender into the basket. But as I, if I want to play in college, I know I need to get some more moves in there to um, be able to keep doing that. So I've been working on those the most. Okay. And any kind of, as far as your physical skills, any, um, I mean, first of all, I guess I'll ask a, a simple question. I know obviously you came back and played, but are you, um, is the, the knee a hundred percent and everything's okay? You still do any kind of rehab with that or and anything else as far as physical skills that you're working on? Um, they said I stopped to wear my brace. I slightly tore my ACL. That's, um, what they're calling it. I went to, um, I, oh wait, where did I go? <laughs> I went to go see a doctor and um, recently I had a Zoom meeting with him to look at my knee. I've told him everything about it and um, I've been running every day and he uh, said I don't have to wear my brace unless it's like um, uh, contact activity sure. now. And so, um, but with the brace, it definitely feels different and I'm working on being quicker and strength always and those are two main things. Okay <clears throat> back real quick to what you're talking about when you your work with the skills coach just kind of curious to have you expand a little bit on the on the footwork is he was the the goal to try to help you get your shot off quicker was it more about being on balance or maybe being squared up or what were the what was the the footwork uh focus that you guys have been working on? Um, yeah, all, all of those really, 
Um, with footwork is probably one of the biggest things where either I can, once I get the ball, be ready to shoot or also at the same time being ready to take, um, take it to the basket, reading your defender. I've um, had during those, um, I do it with a, another person and we go against each other and just read each other. We, we learn the different moves and um, we read each other and try to do them right then and there and it definitely helps me in the game I do it in the game and I don't even know it <laughs> yep yeah I mean you talked about it obviously everybody wants to expand their game and their moves but the simple fact is if you just have a couple of really good ones that you can count on and then a counter off of that once they realize okay she's when she does this she's going this way and you you think get them think you're going that way and you can counter back off of it a lot of times uh, people try to make it a little bit harder obviously I, I respect you trying to expand on it but a lot of times if you just get really, really good at a couple of things and it'll work most of the time, but those are great things to work on. So thank you. Uh, Katie, I'll move on to you then uh, talking about the same thing, your, uh, any skills and any physical stuff that you're working on that you want to improve before next year. Um, I'm working on getting my left hand stronger, being able to go on the left side while well, like side and um, just attacking and being able to, use my moves to get to the basket and getting my shot off quicker. I don't have the quickest release. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that I see a lot um, with younger point guards, uh, Katie, I'm just kind of curious if it's something that you're focused on too, is obviously, you know, getting stronger. A lot of times when you face the pressure and, and uh, have, you know, people all over you, sometimes it takes some extra strength to be able to handle that for 32 minutes. Is that something that you're working on too? Yeah, I've been trying to just get stronger and like just working out to get as I'm not strongest on the court. That's for yeah. sure. Well, and obviously in this environment, that's a little bit tough to try to always find the the ways to uh, to work out. So, um, back expanding a little bit on something else that you said when you're talking about your left hand, is that something? Um, did you see? Uh, defenses last year start shading you towards your right hand as far as trying to take that away and forcing you to go to your left or have you been lucky enough to not have them like, have them try to you know, force you that way yet? Um, a little bit like towards the end they did but like watching film and I noticed that like most of my moves attacking I was always to the right so I want to be able to go the other side too so I just can't yeah. play one side. Yeah, and that's why I was just curious. Sometimes they, sometimes some good coaches and teams will pick that up, but it sounds like luckily you haven't had it forced on you yet, but you're doing the right thing because if you don't improve that left and start focusing on it, they'll catch on and they'll make you do it. So you've got, got to work on it yourself. Okay, great. And then I'm going to go back to Carly then and on to the next question, which is uh, kind of focused on talking a little bit about your background in the game. Carly, talking about uh, – you know, how and when you got started, you know, who are some of the influences that got you started? And then just talk a little bit about, you know, who some of the players are maybe that you've grown up watching, whether that may, may be some girls that, you know, were in high school when you were in grade school and middle school and you were watching, you know, the, the high school team and learning from them. You know, maybe that might be, you know, other college players or pro players, male or female that you've watched, but just kind of help everybody get to learn what, how you got through started in this game and who your influences have been, Carly. Um, yeah, uh, I started when I was about four years old, and my family is very athletic, and I have two older siblings who were involved in basketball track, basically every sport you could probably think of, so um, I obviously had to do that as well, so I've been playing for quite a while. Um, I always went to the high school basketball games growing up, so I remember watching Aubrey Carlisle and Kayla Gronwald, who is now our assistant coach, and just watching them and just, I was always just excited to get in the program just to be able to play like them. And um, some people who have influenced me, um, obviously Coach Supernaut, he's always been the one to challenge me um, and make me better. Um, Galen Blakemore is one of my AAU coaches. He just kind of gave me the freedom to play my game and learn what my strengths were. And then obviously my um, dad, he's always been like the hardest on me for sure and just pushed me to be the best player I could be. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, Carly, and probably a lot of other people out there in this world, but when you grow up with older brothers and sisters, uh, you know, although sometimes you probably would rather uh, 
kick them in the behind is ever admit that you've learned anything from them or or watch them. But uh, in the end, when you look back on it, they probably a little bit of an influence on you and helped you learn by watching what they were doing. Is that right? Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know I was the youngest and I always wanted to, you know, I wanted to fight my older brother half the time, but I learned an awful lot from him. So um, Megan, <laughs> jump into, uh, into you and the same, same questions about your background in the game and your influences, please. Okay. Um, I started playing when I was three at, um, at Carthage Family Fitness. It's a thing you have in Carthage. Um, my mom got me started with basketball. And ever since I picked up the ball, I've been crazy about the game. I've always wanted to be playing. And I was also fortunate enough, I'm the youngest of three others. And um, like they real being the youngest, it really makes you tougher. And I remember my mom telling me a story that my very first game of my brothers, um, I was only like two weeks old when I went. And um that just makes me smile when I hear that. Um, and my influences, I've had a lot of people. My, I would say my biggest influence is my mom. She has coached me um, all the way up to high school. Um, she is my biggest supporter. She comes to every game. She would never miss a game. Um, and then another one of my big supporter um, influencers is my grandpa. Um, he has rarely ever missed a game either. And, um, it's always, I always know to go up to him after a game and he'll tell me what he thinks and what I need to improve on and what I need to change. And he always has something to say that will make me smile, but it'll also make my game better. Um, and then a few other names is, uh, Matt Pugh, which is my skills coach. Um, super not, he has helped me these last two years or yeah two I think and um uh like Carly said Galen Blakemore um we both played for him he um is a really good coach um for me and then John Artman which is Carly's dad he's always told me what's on his mind and what I need to do to help my game okay awesome Katie I'll jump to you then with the same question um I also started in CFF and then when we were in primary, we Carthage girls started the traveling team. And um, so that's where I started. And I'd say my biggest influencer is my grandpa. And he used to take me to his teams, like who he coached their practices and I'd get a practice and learn with them. And he is probably the most hard on me after games. Rarely do I ever hear him say good game. And if I do, then I know I had like an awesome game. And my mom, who's always been like my biggest supporter and would follow anything that I decide to do. And obviously the coaching staff, Supernaut and um, Coach Patrick. And I always remember um, when I was little watching Michaela at the high school games and I wanted to be like her she was a point guard and I'd look up her awesome yeah and I, you know I hear that a lot and if uh, I grew up in a small town you see that you see that a lot you know where your other people might be especially in a bigger city or whatever might be watching games on tv and as kids growing up in smaller areas like us you the biggest thing you remember is all those kids that you saw on the court you know when you were uh when you were younger and, and that's what you remember and you find yourself on your in your driveway the next day trying to do something you saw them do on a Friday night or, or whatever. So those are big influences when you grow up in small towns like that. Um, uh, on back to Carly then, I guess that, that last question that I sent out to you guys, um, just kind of want to talk about next year, um, what your goals are, not only for yourself personally, anything that you're trying to achieve, your, uh, and then also just any goals that you guys you know have for the team, whether they be the same ones that Coach already talked about, or anything that you have on your on your own that you want to try to achieve. So, Carly, um, I obviously want to play in college, so I want to do whatever it takes to get me to that point. So I'm improving all of my strengths and weaknesses in the game next year, and then as a team, I. I want to win conference and I want to beat Lewiston really bad. And then um, I want to make it to state and place and just say that we did it. 
for Alana West and make history. Okay, awesome. Um, it wasn't one of the questions, Carly, that I sent out, but since you mentioned it, I will um, ask you to expand a little bit. You mentioned, obviously, that you're wanting to play in college. Is there uh, anything happening with that? Have you had the luck or to be talking to any coaches already or uh, anything like that? Yes, um, I have been talking to multiple college coaches. Um, along with basketball, I also want to play volleyball as well in college, so I've been lucky enough to be able to talk to coaches in both sports. Oh, awesome. And uh, are you kind of staying wide open as far as the types of schools that you're looking at, or is there anything, uh, in, you know, are you looking to maybe stay up in the area that you're at right now and try to stay close to home, or is there anything that you're, that's specific that will kind of influence where you think you may end up? Um, obviously, I want to say closer to home, but I mean, I would, if I really enjoyed the school, then I would not mind going farther as well, but just a very academically like strong school, and because I want to be a child psychiatrist, so just in a bigger city, which okay. would help. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Megan, then back to you as far as the same question regarding uh, your personal goals and any team goals for next year. Um, my individual goals are to continue to work and improve on all aspects of my game. And, and I want to play basketball in college. Um, and as of now, I'm wanting to become a vet. So I'm wanting to, I'm going to try to be doing that as I play basketball. And then for my team goals, I want to lead my team the, as far as I can. I want to be that vocal leader on the court and off the court for the young, um, I guess, uh, for the younger girls next year. Um, Cause I know how much I needed that coming in as a freshman playing on varsity, those girls, those senior girls um, really helped me through that. And I want to be like that when as a upperclassman too. Okay. Um, and while I know, obviously you're only going into your junior year, Megan, I'll ask you to a little bit about the, the college thing too, since you're lucky enough to already kind of have a good idea of what you want to do. Um, have you already started to sort of explore which schools there are out there that, that offer um, the type of program that you want to get into, or are you thinking that, you know, you know that are you going to be trying to get into a specific school right away that has a vet program? Or I know a lot of times the vet, the vet program itself takes longer than four years. So are you thinking you'll go somewhere else for your four year degree and to be able to play basketball and then move on to a vet program after that? Or do you have any thoughts on that yet? Um, actually, uh, I've talked a lot with my sister-in-law. She's a vet right now, and she's helped me a ton. And I've ha she went to Iowa State, and both of my older siblings have went to Iowa State and got um, an ag business degree. Well, my sister's getting there. She has one more year left. And um, I've obviously looked there, but if I get an offer somewhere else to go play basketball, I will be willing to go play there and then after that I can go to Iowa State or wherever I want to um, finish my vet degree. Okay awesome thanks for that information and then Katie uh, jumping on to you then as far as again goals for next year for yourself and then any kind of team goals? Um, for team would definitely be to go farther and I'm positive that we can because with what we have coming back and for individual is just to grow as a player and develop new skills and um, to start getting on college's radar and start talking to them. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, again, obviously you're only going into your junior season, Katie, so I don't expect you to have all of the answers, but I'll, I'll ask you similar as I did to, to Megan to maybe expand on that a little bit. Do you have any, any ideas of anything that might, uh, that you're going to be looking for in a college as far as whether that be, staying close to home, whether that be anything you think you might be planning on trying to study that will become important to you. It may be the type of play that the you know, system that they run or anything at all like that that's on your mind yet as far as what may uh, help to lead you down the path of what college might work for you. Um, I haven't really thought about it that much, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do after high school, like what job I'm looking for. So I haven't really decided. That's fine. Uh, you don't have to be embarrassed about that, Katie. Most girls your age are not Megan and know exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> um, some some of us are you know 54 years old and don't know what we're doing yet, so don't worry about it, okay? Um, 
but anyway, good. Thanks for your, all, all of that input, girls. And with that, um, I am going to go ahead and t- turn it back to Coach. I didn't uh, force too much additional information. I let the girls talk as they as they may. But anything maybe you may have heard that they left out about their skills or anything you would like to add about any of these three girls? Uh, you know, listen to those three talk. I remember when these three um, came to our basketball camps when they were younger and that. And I knew way back then that they were going to be something special. And just to see them grow each year and how much they've improved and the passion that they have to play basketball, you know, it, it, I'm just so lucky to coach them. And, and I'm thankful to have them in the program. You know, I have a eight year old daughter who this year started to be our water girl and, and she's around the game a lot. She comes to practices and, and she loves being around the girls and that, and that's what you want want good role models and they these three certainly are that so um, of course you know Carly and Megan um, they, they they talked about having older sisters and they played for me as well and I think they wanted like they said they want to take that next step in our program and I think you know we're headed in the right direction and these three certainly do have that you know they have a they work hard uh, and, and they want to be good and we have that you know as a coach you kind of sit back and this season I kind of let them kind of do their thing and, and this summer and going to next year was something that myself and the coaches have really talked about is just, okay, now we've kind of take that next step and kind of just letting them play because they've had that year together, a full year together, uh, playing a lot of minutes together. And uh, it just, it's exciting. And they're great academically students. Um, so you don't have to worry about that for college coaches. And they're just overall good kids come from good families. So yep. Um, I'm excited about next season. Hopefully, uh, things get better in the world and, you know, uh, we get take care of business with coronavirus and that. But again, I'm just, I'm so happy to see how much they've improved. And I know that they're inching to get back into the gym and to get better and to move forward. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I'll reiterate, you kind of, you kind of made that same point right there and I'll reiterate what we were talking about before you know, a lot of times in smaller communities like that that's that's one of the most important things that's how the program continues to go is girls like your daughter being the 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 water girl and sitting on the bench and seeing what these girls are doing and learning from them and realizing uh, how important and fun it is and they want to follow in that path and uh, that's you, you find it all the time. And so it's, it's great to have three girls like this that you, like you said, you feel comfortable as great influences and kids that you want around your daughter. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, before we end, uh, I'm going to throw somebody under the bus here real quick. Um, <laughs> I, I have another guest here with us and I'm just going to introduce him real quick. Um, and, uh, and that is uh, Brian Carmen and Brian is uh, another writer that is joining the staff uh, here at Prep Girls Hoops and he lives up uh, uh, up near Springfield and so he's a little bit farther north than I am so I had him join in on this call um, so that he would get to know coach and uh, and start to develop some some relationships and names so Brian I don't obviously expect a lot out of you but I wanted to at least introduce you and let you say hi. Hey uh, appreciate that um, it's been nice to meet you girls meet you coach um I coached in, in college for a few years at Augustana College, so um, I have a big love for women's basketball and um, for getting high school girls to the next level. Um, that was my favorite thing to do when I coached at Augustana was to recruit and meet the new families, meet the new players, meet the new coaches, and you guys are all on the right path to get where you want to go. So um, I'm from the area. I went to Rushville High School, um, so I'm very familiar with your guys' area. My wife actually is from Illini West. So um, to get to meet you guys is awesome. And for me to be able to work with your guys' area more and meet more athletes like yourselves and hopefully get the word out for you guys so we can get to the next level would be, would be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay. Great. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate that. And, it, and as I end up, I will also say for anybody, obviously, who watches this and sees the, the poster of the human highlight film behind uh, uh, Brian shoulder off Brian's shoulder. You know, if you got a picture of a poster of Dominique Wilkins up in your, in your room, you're a good, you're a good man in my world. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything else left to add other than again, coach, thanks for joining girls. Thanks for taking some time out of your, out of your night to introduce yourselves to us and help everybody get to know you. And uh, as we all 
would say. Um, hopefully things are back to normal as soon as possible in our world and we can uh, start watching basketball instead of just talking about it. Absolutely. Thank you for having us and that. We look forward to talking with you in the future, Brian and Don. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.